Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Mitch. Good Friday evening to you all. Hope you guys are doing well out there and more importantly, a staying safe as we know, even if you're just somewhat active in the weather community, you know what's been going on out there since about lunchtime and central time with this tornado outbreak that's been ongoing really since then. We had tornadoes as early as like what 12 1 p.m in nebraska and like central nebraska i mean we had tornadoes pretty early in the day in, in texas photogenic tornadoes too and what i mean by photogenic is they were i mean very visible i mean you could see them like something you would see out of like twister or some sort of you know just a weather movie or something like that i mean it was just crazy stuff and then things got really going in eastern nebraska uh, right around Lincoln, right around Omaha, and then things got pretty active over the last couple hours in western and southwestern Iowa. It's just been incredibly active. Certainly things have overperformed today as far as what was forecast after yesterday kind of underperformed. Yet, uh, today has just really overperformed. It's been just downright scary and dangerous today of what we've seen from these storm chasers, which have done an incredible job. The people who go live have done an awesome job just keeping people aware of what's going on. And just some of the most incredible footage I've seen in my entire life has been displayed out there. So what we're going to do is we're not going to talk about what's going on right now. You guys know I don't go live. And I know there's a lot of people watching the people going live, and rightfully so, especially if you live in the plains or just have an interest in weather. If you know, uh, you know, are familiar with my channel, you know I keep things in the future. So that means we are going to talk specifically on tomorrow's severe weather threat. We're not going to jump to Sunday. We're just going to talk about Saturday severe weather risk. There is a different feature driving uh, a good portion of this, but the same feature that's driving the event right now is going to have a big player on the northern mode of this. And we're going to break it all down. But most of this video is going to go straight to the point here. And I say that, and here I am two minutes into an intro. But we're going to break it all down for you folks because tomorrow has an opportunity to be another tornado outbreak also for a much larger area. So if you guys have not subscribed, certainly consider doing that. Like the video if you like it. If anybody has anything that I can pray about or pray over, as always, please put those in the comments below. Did not have a chance to answer the comments this evening. Um, well, uh, from this morning's video for this afternoon, but I will catch up with that over the weekend into around Sunday or so. So let's get rocking and rolling. So I want to show you water vapor loop because it shows the pieces on the puzzle. So this is what's really just bringing this tornado outbreak right now. There's a surface low right into here spinning around. This is yanking in all the ingredients up into this region. So I'm going to retake this arrow off your screen. I uh, didn't want to take the L. Let's circle that again. So you see these whiter colors that indicates more moisture in the atmosphere. You see them basically exploding right in here. That is where your tornadic storms have been. They've also been down here in Texas. Models did not do great at all, especially the HRRR model, which I always typically use. But, you know, each model have, has their fail moments for sure. None of them are perfect. They're not. They're just used for guidance. They're not used uh, just to look at and say, hey, this is exactly what's going to happen. But we had tornadoes very early in the day um, uh, today, you know, early this afternoon, just after lunchtime in like central, east central Texas. And we still got ongoing storms. And we've had tornadoes in eastern Kansas, too. We can't ignore that. Um, and we could get some tornadoes, uh, you know, throughout later this evening into areas of Missouri, maybe even Arkansas. So we still need to watch. But this entire area in white here is this system number one. This low is going to slowly, I mean, crawl up here. And the reason it's crawling is because you have a ridge that's really built up into this region. And this is forcing this that way. But because it's going so slow, this is going to actually have an opportunity to be hanging out right in here, you know, give or take 100, 150 miles. And uh, going to have an opportunity to bring a severe weather risk for these areas tomorrow, driven off still this system from Thursday and today. But what's going to drive to most of tomorrow's severe weather risk is this right here. Another upper low really diving down. Same kind of general setup as what's been driving the last couple days. It's going to dive down. And yet again, another surface low is going to develop tomorrow and just kind of rejuice the atmosphere right through here. Bring in yet another threat of significant tornadoes and very large hail and damaging wind. So that's what's driving this. Two different features right here and right here and uh, just back to back and that is why we've had so much severe weather we're kind of right in the middle of it right now today has like i said overachieved so just want to break down that portion of it i know that might bore some people but i like to do that 
Latest from the Storm Prediction Center for tomorrow. I'm going to be up bright and early and give you guys a, even an earlier update than I typically do because I got some things to do in the morning. But I thought it was important to make a video tonight because people are probably very spooked now from what just happened, uh, what continues to happen uh, today into tonight. So latest information from the Storm Prediction Center has a very large enhanced risk. And remember, we had the enhanced risk today. We have it right now. We didn't even have a moderate risk. What happened today would warrant it a high risk, level five out of five. Um, but, you know, it just goes to show you that, you know, if confidence isn't there, um, you know, it just isn't. And sometimes, you know, the, the worst case scenario can happen. And I would say today has been the worst case scenario, in my opinion. Um, of course, we never know what the true worst case scenario is, but you get what I'm saying. But an enhanced risk stretching from Des Moines, these same areas that's been dealing with the tornadoes today. I mean, southeast sections of Nebraska, including Omaha and Lincoln, pretty much. OK, all the way through, I mean, the entire central and uh, western half, I'm sorry, eastern half of Kansas, right through the heart of Oklahoma into northern Texas. And you got the slight risk that basically goes, I mean, from the uh, U.S.-Mexico line here, almost all the way to the Canadian U.S. line up here in the Great Lakes region. So what is this driven off of? Let's just zoom into each individual region, and we're going to show everybody. Let's talk about the southern mode first. Let's talk about Oklahoma, Texas, even portions of Arkansas. So if you're in the orange, you have that level three out of five risk and enhanced risk. Oklahoma City, Norman, Lawton, Wichita Falls, not quite to Dallas, Fort Worth, but that could change. Um, you know, up here to Tulsa, the slight risk, you know, Fort Smith, Fayetteville, Arkansas, Dallas, Fort Worth area, Waco, San Angelo, Albaline. Okay. Woodward, including in the enhanced risk also. Austin, you know, San Antonio, just a marginal risk. That could change. Some of this could tweak, guys. We'll have another update here in the next several hours at about probably 3 or 4 o'clock in the morning Eastern time. Okay, we'll back this up. What is this driven off here? Of Here's the tornado outlook right here. Once again, a 10% risk of a tornado within 25 miles in a given location in this yellow area. And you see the black dashes going in between. That means there's also a 10% chance of a strong tornado, EF2 or higher, which we have definitely seen today. And I think we're going to see it again tomorrow. The brown area, that's a 5% risk of a tornado. The green area, a 2% risk of a tornado. Not going to name all the cities again, but you see it on your screen. Hopefully it's nice and clear for you folks. So what, what's the other risk? You know, wind outlook. We have a 30% chance, a higher wind threat tomorrow. 30% risk in the red area. Winds exceeding 55 to 60 miles per hour. In the yellow area, it's a 15% risk of that. Okay. And then the hail threat is going to be significant also, quite literally. The red area, 30% chance of hail exceeding one inch in diameter or larger. Yellow, 15% risk. And if you live in the black outline region, pretty much covering all the red area, 30%, and then a good chunk of the 15% risk, that means you have the 10% chance to see significant severe weather. In this case, hail, two inch in diameter or larger, a 10% risk to see that, guys. Okay, so that's the southern mode. What about the central mode? This includes Kansas, uh, Nebraska, Iowa, Missouri. Okay, enhanced risk includes Hutchinson, Manhattan, Emporia, Topeka, Kansas City, St. Joseph, jo St. Joseph, I'm sorry, Lincoln, pretty much Omaha, all these areas right here up to Des Moines. Okay, so what is this driven off of? It's kind of the same stuff, guys. Uh, tornado outlook, here it is. If you live in that yellow area, once again, 10% chance of a strong tornado, you might as well say. Just a 10% chance of a tornado, but there's also a 10% chance of a stronger tornado, EF2 or higher. And this includes everybody in this yellow area, guys. Doesn't You know, it's kind of chopped off on the enhanced risk up here, so you only get that 5% chance of a tornado in Des Moines, Omaha. So maybe a little bit more less than what we're seeing, you know, this afternoon to this evening. But, yeah, I mean, it could be a big tornado day in Kansas, down in Oklahoma, and in sections of Missouri, can uh, Nebraska, I'm sorry, and um, Iowa. Okay? So, what about the other outlooks? There's that wind outlook. Remember that red? That's a 30% chance of winds exceeding 55 to 60 miles per hour. Kansas City, you're including Des Moines, bigger cities, bigger towns, Wichita, down here. Hell threat, big hell as possible tomorrow, especially up here, a little bit more cold air aloft. This entire area in the red, that's a 30% chance of hell exceeding one inch in diameter or larger. And then the yellow, remember, 15% risk of that. And if you live in the black outline region, this includes a good chunk. I mean, all the way back here to Colby and Goodland, Kansas, guys. Um, I mean, that's a 10% chance of hell exceeding two inch in diameter or larger. Okay. And then we'll finish this off by talking about the northern mode. My folks here in the Great Lakes region, I got some viewers up here. Listen, you guys have a severe weather risk too. Still driven off the same system that we're seeing right now. So, you know, in the yellow area, Green Bay. Gaylord, I mean, Milwaukee, almost Chicago, not quite Peoria, Rockford, Madison. Uh, you guys, you know, 
A level two out of five risk of severe weather, a slight risk. Could have some severe weather all the way up here in the UP and Michigan. What is this driven off of? Well, just a 2% risk of a tornado, but this could increase. I could see this extending, the 5% extending into northern Iowa, maybe even, I'm sorry, northern Illinois, maybe even southern Wisconsin. I really could. Uh, but, you know, the wind outlook, yellow area, 15% risk. Like I said, a wind's exceeding 55 to 60 miles per hour if you live in that area. And then a hell outlook. Um, you know, 15% risk of hail exceeding one inch in diameter or larger. So I want to get very detailed on the Storm Prediction Center outlook, even though something will probably change when we wake up in the morning. But I, I think we just need to keep pumping out this information, keep people aware. So we're going to really dive deep into this. We're going to talk about state by state. Now, some of these sections will include two states like this one, Texas and Oklahoma. I'm going to tell you right off the dot, guys. And, you know, the OOZ HRR model is about to drop here any minute. Uh, that'll bring us even further out. But the only thing we'll look at is the 18Z. Uh, tomorrow is going to be complex. There's going to be multiple areas of storms to watch for, just like today. And it's just a huge area that runs a threat. It's going to be very hard to keep up with for everybody. Storm chasers, uh, people who go live with the radars, and even people like me who have to make these very long videos to cover all these areas. It's not like it's just one or two states. So let's start off by looking at Texas and Oklahoma. What is the HRR model showing? Well, it is showing morning convection, meaning morning showers and storms. You know, well north of Albaline, almost getting close to the Wichita uh, Falls region, you know, getting into southwest Oklahoma. We got some morning uh, big time storms potentially. I mean, severe, they could be producing really all hazards. It really could. The atmosphere is already going to be prime when we wake up, and I'll show you that here in a second. So we start to get into about lunchtime, 1 p.m. Some storms already working their way into the Oklahoma City area, potentially Tulsa. You guys had some nasty storms this morning. Um, early to mid-afternoon, you could already have some storms starting to work their way into a pretty ripe environment out ahead of it. And uh, listen, they could be all hazards. Very large hail, a tornado risk with this. Any With any of these storms in Oklahoma, you're wondering, well, what's going to happen in Texas? Well, hold on. I'm going to show you. But I can tell you, I mean, this is around, excuse me, my nose is itching, around 6 p.m. tomorrow, right? Look at these kidney bean looks. You see how these are hooking right here in central Oklahoma? I mean, I'm telling you, these storms will have the capability of producing tornadoes in central Oklahoma. Oklahoma City right in here is around 6 p.m., Tulsa up here. And then look at these storms at the southern extent of this line down here to the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And then check out, you see all these little storms, they almost... Had that kidney bean when I kidney bean when I I mean look up what a kidney bean look like looks like it kind of hooks like this and that's how supercells look that just really tells us that we have some sort of southwest flank to them we probably have a rotating thunderstorm you know supercells really take on a very similar structure even when they're embedded in convection but look at these storms in northern uh, Texas very large hail damaging winds. And, I mean, these storms really start to train over one another, kind of go over the same areas. I mean, by the time we get to about 10, 11 p.m., we're getting an intense line of storms developing with embedded uh, pockets of very large hail and tornadoes. And by the time we get to about midnight, I mean, these storms are like stationary. I mean, look at them. They're just kind of reforming over the same areas. We could get a flash flooding threat that could develop in certain areas where these storms just keep kind of just reforming over the same regions. I mean, this is uh, this is midnight tomorrow night. Look at these nasty storms well west of the Dallas-Fort Worth region. I mean, and damaging winds could be a big threat. And finally, they get a move on as we start to get into the wee hours of the morning, Sunday morning, and they start blasting through all central and northern Texas and Oklahoma. And then, you know, probably start to lose a little bit of steam as you're waking up Sunday morning as it heads into the eastern sections of Texas, Arkansas, and then southeastern Oklahoma. So, I mean, there's a lot going on. There really is. And, you know, you can sit there and you compare this to the NAM too, if you want. And, uh, you know, same similar setup. I mean, shows that morning storms right here along the Red River. And it shows them dissipating a lot faster than the HRR model. And the NAM kind of shows, doesn't really show anything else getting going until after the sun sets tomorrow. But then begins to show a lot of sh scattered storms kind of over the same areas. And it develops that same similar structure line right here. But it really has a huge gap between the morning uh, tomorrow morning and then like late tomorrow evening. But it has the same scenario overnight tomorrow night with a uh, line of storms sweeping through. So if you look at the HRR model as far as significant tornado parameter for Oklahoma and Texas, it's already high tomorrow. I mean, we can already have some storms producing some tornadoes in like southwestern Oklahoma tomorrow. I mean, I could see it happening. 
But as we start to get, you know, until, you know, until about midday, just early afternoon, significant tornado parameter remains decently high off the latest HRRR model. But there is a chance that the morning convection that you're seeing in these areas could kind of work the atmosphere and prevent really anything from getting going. It's discussed in the Storm Prediction Center discussion. We'll see what happens with that. Um, but, you know, as we start to get to about 6, 7, 8, 9 p.m., it starts to spike again. You start to see these 10s and 12s on the significant tornado parameter. The higher the number, the better ingredients for tornadoes. And, I mean, they're really this bright and vibrant colors. really indicates a higher end threat of tornadoes with any storms that can get really going and become like semi-discreet or even discreet. And I mean, it really spikes down here ahead of this line that's going to develop down here in Texas. So I would say there's still going to be a tornado threat along this line. And, and look how this number basically evaporates here. It just drops off dramatically. And that's because those storms move in and really eat up the atmosphere, if that makes any sense. They basically eat up the fuel in the um, atmosphere. And if you look at the updraft velocity swath, all this area you see here is for overnight. Well, we could have some storms spinning here in northeast Texas. And then there's that area you watch for tomorrow morning all the way to about lunchtime. And, I mean, even as we're getting into tomorrow afternoon, HRRR model says, hey, watch out for some storms capable of producing rotating thunderstorms. Not necessarily a tornado, but storms are capable of producing a tornado right through the Oklahoma City area, potentially, maybe all the way up to Tulsa. And then we'll see the line of storms develop overnight. And then you see that highlight area right in here from that line of storms late tomorrow evening. So be aware in Oklahoma and Texas tomorrow. I hope that makes sense. Just in general, guys, you know, and I'm showing you this and a lot of people are like, well, Mitch, I still don't understand what time I'm going to get storms at my house. Nobody knows what time storms are going to hit your house. Just it's important to have a reliable radar, radar scope, radar omega. Both are great products. They don't cost much at all. They do cost a little bit a year, like ten dollars. I know Radar Scope does. That's what I use. And guys, you can literally plug your address in there and it'll put an icon where you live. And it's really honestly self-explanatory. But I know not everybody understands a radar. I totally get it. But um let's focus back on this. Kansas will also include southern Nebraska in this also. Um, but same thing, you know, we have to watch for some storms that develop just after like lunchtime here in eastern Kansas, these could produce, I'm not going to say they won't because I didn't think the storms in central Nebraska this morning that I talked about were going to produce. And I was dead wrong. Those were some of the first tornado producers of the day. Um, but, you know, you start to work your way into a, this afternoon. The further north you get, the weirder it gets. I mean, it's around 3 p.m. You got storms up here showing up in like northern Kansas, you got some big storms down here in Oklahoma, some storms right here where, you know, Nebraska, Missouri, and Kansas meet uh, right up into Iowa. And then you kind of get a clearing based off the latest H strip R model around 5, 6 p.m. Not a whole lot going on. Look at these big storms down here showing up on the H strip R model around, you know, 7 p.m. in southeast Kansas. We got some storms up here like near Goodland and Colby in northwest Kansas. We can't ignore those either, guys. This will be closer to the surface low. Those could produce some very large hail and some tornadoes also right over here. Um, do not ignore those. But, I mean, look at this training line of storms right over, really just pinpointing southeastern Kansas. And then you do got those storms right up here in southern Nebraska. And you see the southern flank of these storms around at 7 p.m. You know, they could be, the atmosphere could be feeding into the southern sections of those storms, aiding in a tornado threat. But there is this weird gap right here in the middle of Kansas and eastern Kansas. So what's going to happen with that? Well, we're not quite sure. If you look at the NAM on this output, what does the NAM show? Well, you know, you get into Saturday morning, not a whole lot going on. Maybe some leftover boundaries. Um, but, you know, you start to get to the afternoon hour, still not a lot going on. And then we start to get these storms that show up in northwest Kansas. And I'm telling you guys, these could produce very large hail and even a tornado threat. I would not ignore a tornado threat near the surface low. And you start to get some storms around 5 p.m. in kind of west central Kansas, but really nothing ongoing in eastern Kansas where you do have that 10% risk of a strong tornado. And then they get going. Here you go. You know, 7 p.m. right here in the middle of the state of Kansas, starting to trail into southern Nebraska. You start to get some supercells that start getting going on the NAM. It's a little bit different of kind of an evolution in the HRRR, but HRRR model though, right? So, you know, these storms could be producing right in here, all hazards. These storms could too, closer to the surface low. 
And uh, you got to watch what happens overnight. You know, both models, the NAM and the HRR model, both kind of show the evolution of this kind of training line of storms in, in Oklahoma into southeast and eastern sections of um, Kansas, all the way up to Kansas City. Okay. And then this trails off into Sunday morning. So we just need to be mindful of this. And, you know, this is the HRR model as far as the significant tornado parameter, already pretty high for southern sections of the state, you know, early in the morning. But then it kind of, Atmosphere gets a little bit worked. Um, it starts to build up here where some boundaries could be in place. So, you know, you got these little pockets where the significant tornado parameter has higher numbers of closer to like 9, 10, and 11, and then pockets down here too. And we just got to watch. And, you know, you see this weird kind of opening here? That is because there's storms developing here, eating up the atmosphere. And when it kind of works the atmosphere, Tornado threat probably drops at that point um, as, uh, you know, basically the storms are kind of taking away the fuel in the atmosphere. But in general, you see this entire area that has colors. I mean, even if it's a three or four, those are ingredients for tornadoes. So be mindful of this uh, for sure. And, you know, you look at the updraft felicity swath from the latest HRR model, and, you know, it shows the gap right here. But it does kind of indicating rotating storms here in the northern counties of Kansas, southern Nebraska. And look over here. I mean, even in Colorado, but northwestern Kansas, rotating thunderstorms and a lot of rotation with this line right in here. And if you look at the NAM, what it shows, you know, it shows storms forming right here in central Kansas. So therefore, it shows rotating thunderstorms. But it also shows the same thing over here, northwestern portion of the state. And down here, southeastern portion and into southern sections, southeast section, once again, of Nebraska that has been slammed this afternoon into this evening. Okay, so it's a tough one. Tough one across the board, guys. You look at Missouri. Missouri is another tough state, guys. I mean, it really is. This is going to be a, a very hard forecast. We're trying to pinpoint where the storms are going to be. But with Missouri, deep breath. Um Look, I mean, you got some storms right up here in the northwest corner of Missouri on the HRR model around 3 p.m. Scattered convection in the southern half of the state. And then uh, do you get some kind of opening? I really want to watch these storms here in southern Iowa, which we'll talk about here in a second. But you see how they're extending into the northern counties of Missouri. Like the southern extension of this could be producing tornadoes, no doubt about it. But then we still have these weird gaps all through Missouri. And then this line of storms really develops, almost connects with this. And this is when we have to start to watch near Springfield, Joplin. I mean, even up to Kansas City. We just got to watch these storms. It's around 10 p.m. You back this up one hour because this is an Eastern time. You got to watch all these storms right in here, guys. And, you know, this continues. And this is like 1 o'clock in the morning. Nasty line of storms just kind of making its way almost in a diagonal fashion right across the state uh, from southwest to northeast across Missouri. And anybody kind of out in front of these storms, the atmosphere is really feeding into these storms. So damaging winds, large hail, and a tornado threat even embedded into this line into the overnight hours, in my opinion. And then this kind of starts to lose some steam as we're getting into Sunday morning, and it's heading right through the Ozarks of southern Missouri and northern Arkansas at this point. And, you know, you look at the NAM, you compare it with this. i get a little bit more comfortable in my chair here. Um, NAM's evolution, same kind of thing you know it doesn't show much of anything throughout the afternoon evening hours in missouri it really doesn't it says hey the main show is going to be this line tomorrow night that works its way out of kansas and oklahoma eventually into missouri and then you know produces some sort of severe weather risk but it really doesn't the nam says hey you know you ain't going to get really anything tomorrow in missouri so hopefully the nam's right we all need a break um significant tornado parameter though just looking at the h triple r model Certainly nothing too crazy. It begins to spike in northern Missouri, though. You got lower readings everywhere else throughout the state. And then it really begins to spike tomorrow evening ahead of this line of storms. I mean, you got sevens, eights, nines, and tens on here. But then, you know, you get might get something that eats up the atmosphere here. It's just, it's just everywhere. It really is. Any Like I said, just like with Kansas, anywhere you see colors, the atmosphere is there for tornado development. It is. So, and, you know, you look at the updraft felicity swath, same kind of deal, guys. Um, it really it likes the ideas, uh, the idea of these storms here in southern sections of Iowa, which we'll talk about here in a second. And then it likes the line of storms that kind of, you know, I mean, look, Springfield right in here. I mean, you got the highlighted colors, which indicate rotating thunderstorms. Okay. 
Um, almost to the end of this, but the, you know, one of these states we'll kind of zoom in on is Iowa once again, okay, which is getting nasty weather right now. If the HRPR model is correct, we're going to get this cluster of storms that pushes into the state from the south to the north around you know 3, 4 p.m. All these storms will need to be watched. They could produce all hazards, even a tornado threat. Down here, especially on this flank, you see this kind of brighter pink, whitish color. If something like this does develop around 5 p.m. tomorrow, if you live here in the southern counties and southeastern counties of Iowa, you need to pay attention to a tornado threat with this. These could make their way from like to the Davenport area. Uh, I'm trying to think of some more towns and cities down here. Um, well, just any of the communities down here in southeastern Iowa. I mean, even into, like I said, north, um, northeastern Missouri. These storms could still be packing a punch as they head into Iowa also. And that's the HRR model. It never really gets anything very far north up here. Now, it does get some storms that kind of work its way into here late tomorrow evening around Omaha, you know, in these same areas that's been slammed uh, tonight. But, you yeah, know, what, what, what are those, what are those going to do? We're not quite sure. And if we look at the NAM with this, NAM, you know, shows some storms right here in central Iowa tomorrow evening, but definitely a totally different evolution. It does show that cluster of storms heading out of Nebraska into Iowa, and they, it does show it much more intense, too, for uh, um, like Omaha and Lincoln and things like that around midnight, 11 p.m. midnight tomorrow night. But we do need to watch these kind of trailing storms here also. And, uh, you know, you look at the significant tornado parameter for this, it will really spike for those storms to the south, but doesn't really rise to anything in northern and northwestern Iowa. I think there's a little bit more stable air, and I think there will be a dramatic cutoff between unstable air and stable air somewhere right in here. You see how it goes from basically colorful to not? That's basically where the atmosphere basically cuts off here. And it really likes these clusters of storms tomorrow afternoon in southern Iowa. And I, I would agree if they get going. You see the more highlighted colors down here showing rotating thunderstorms. It really favors that area. So last area we'll look at is the upper Midwest. And we'll start off like 1 p.m. tomorrow afternoon. Not a whole lot going on. Some showers out there. Um, but as we are getting into the afternoon hours, you see these storms right around like Janesville, you know, close to Madison. You want to watch these storms because you still got that mid-level jet in place from the surface low still up here from the first system you want to watch these storms in illinois even northwestern indiana i think you're lacking ingredients but you still can have some severe weather and then you start to make your way you know into like 8 p.m tomorrow night look at these storms you see how they had that kidney bean look right in here in southern wisconsin they could increase the tornado threat in southern wisconsin i'm telling you please be aware and then we got this line of storms sweeping out of eastern Iowa into western, northwestern Illinois also. And, you know, they these could impact like Rockford. I mean, this could cluster up, eventually slam areas like Milwaukee, all the way to Green Bay. And look at these storms in northern lower Michigan too. Please be aware of some storms up here. That, and there could be like a like a secondary tornado threat separated in portions of the Great Lakes region. And then you see these kind of areas of storms sweeping throughout northern sections of, of uh, Illinois overnight. And we just get a lot of rain, a lot of a storm action that kind of starts to ride over uh, southern Wisconsin, northern Illinois, Chicago, um, even into southern lower Michigan. So that's what the radar looks like for that area. And of course, we look at the updraft Felicity swath that does indicate some rotation with those supercells I was showing you guys on the H strip R model in the southern sections of Wisconsin. So just be mindful of this. There's some rotating thunderstorms showing up in uh, Illinois too. And there's some pockets in Michigan also. So. What about the ingredients of this? We're going to go over this one more time for tomorrow. We already know that we're waking up tomorrow morning with a rejuiced atmosphere. Okay, I mean, it, we just pretty much repump the atmosphere with moisture with this net with this trough that's going to move in and pull in those sub that southerly flow well from the south. So dew points are going to be in the upper 60s, low 70s, Texas. I mean, 60s all the way up through most of Oklahoma, a good chunk of Kansas, 60s in Arkansas, Louisiana. Uh, Missouri and you know there's going to be a cutoff somewhere in Iowa but I mean you got dew points already you're waking up to uh, that's pretty high into the Great Lakes region but watch as you get to about the prime heating of the day tomorrow afternoon you know you start to get to like four or five o'clock 
Dew points rising into the 60s all the way up to almost the UP of Michigan. Deep moisture over the Mississippi and Missouri Valley here in the areas of the south central U.S. So you can check the moisture off the box, right? We're going to have a massive, broad, north to south, south to north, uh, warm and moist sector tomorrow. Then you look at these cape levels, right? What about the storm energy? Ample amount of it. Already tomorrow morning, you're waking up with tons of storm fuel. We take it to about midday, 1 p.m. tomorrow. I mean, you got cape levels just in this entire orange red area, over two to 3,000 joules per kilogram, all the way up to Iowa. Even storm energy pushing over 1,000 joules per kilogram in areas of the Great Lakes region. And in fact, it will. In fact, this is why I'm concerned for like, you know, southern Wisconsin, northern Illinois, um, if any of these supercells can get going, because it does show Cape values reaching over 2,000 joules per kilogram up here with a lot of flow aloft. So, you know, I just I just worry about some of these areas that might not get talked about as much. And this is what I'm talking about, about like two se separate severe weather threats, right? So this is the main upper trough moving in. Uh, exit region right here, the mid-level jet. This is going to provide ample amount of lift across this entire moist sector setting up right here. So basically, you know, this, you know, exit region, which is, this is what I'm talking about right here, right at the edge of this mid-level jet. It's not really a good cover, color to draw on top of purple. But anyways, I think you can see this right here. This is where you're going to have the best shot. And that's because this jet is going basically right over this region. It's overlapping over all these ingredients. But if you look up here, you got this flow too. And that is because you got this departing system moving out and you got this surface low kind of moving in. And this is going to provide a lot of push in the atmosphere too. And basically anybody in this area you want to watch as a lot of moisture is working up into this area. And I know that's a lot of lines, but I want to watch this area too. Okay. Because you got this area of mid-level flow and then this obvious one right here. So unfortunately, guys, it's going to be another wild day tomorrow for a lot of people just like today. So you guys hunker down, stay safe. And as always, don't wait to take the weather serious until it gets serious. It could cost you a life. God bless all y'all. Stay safe. And I'll talk to you bright and early in the morning.